In the previous video, we encountered a specific problem with the way we are accessing inputs. Uh, when we put it in the constructor, it didn't work. But when we put it in ng on init, it worked. Now, what's going on here? In order to understand this, you need to understand the life cycle of an Angular component. An Angular component has a life cycle. There is a particular thing which causes it to be created. There's a particular thing that causes it to be initialized. And there is a particular thing that causes it to be destroyed. There are certain life cycle events. When you use a selector in order to initialize a component, Angular creates an instance of the class. We've already covered it, right? So when any class is created, when an instance of a class is created, JavaScript, the platform itself, has a concept of a constructor which runs in order to create that object, right? Every object has a constructor that is used to create that object. If you don't write a constructor, it's gonna be a no-op constructor, but you can write code to execute when that object is created. One of the things you can use it for is to populate data. Now, Angular also does a few other things after the object is created. One thing we've just looked at is input. We have told Angular to populate that created object with values that are passed in when that component is used. So what Angular does is after creating the object, it populates the values. Now here's the thing. The constructor is when the object is being created. After the creation of the object is when Angular populates the values. All right, so if you were to add the code over here, like this, right? Angular hasn't had a chance to do anything with this object when the constructor is being called, right? Angular is calling this because you have created this use of this component. You've used the component, Angular creates this instance. This instance is created, this code executes. Now, since Angular has not had a chance to set the input yet, Right? It's waiting for the object to be created before it sets this value. So what's happening in line 15 is that name is being set to an empty value. By default, this is empty, right? which is why nothing shows up over here. You can have this value initialized to a temporary value here, in which case this works fine as temp. right? Angular has not had a chance to populate username yet when the constructor runs. So this would not work if you are depending on something that Angular needs to populate, like the add input over here. So you cannot add code like this in the constructor. Where do you add it? Well, thankfully, Angular offers certain methods on a component that are called by Angular when certain milestones in the component's lifecycle is hit, right? So let's say you want to execute some code after this a discard component is fully created and initialized, right? Angular has done everything that it needs to do. It's fully initialized, and now it's ready to run your code. Where do you run it? You cannot run it in the constructor like we've just seen. Well, Angular provides lifecycle hooks. There are methods you can write on your component, and Angular is guaranteed to call those methods when certain lifecycle steps are hit. For instance, when the component is fully initialized, Angular is going to call a method called ng on init on your code. Whether you have code written in it or not, Angular tries to execute it. If you have a method there, your method is gonna run. If you don't have a method there, Angular says, hey, nothing for me to do, and it's gonna move on. But it is gonna look for this method called ng on init in every component, and it's gonna try and execute it every time Angular is done initializing that instance. And when I say done, I mean populating it with input like we've seen, and a bunch of other things that it does. But uh, this is your chance to execute code when the component is fully initialized, which is why this works fine while well, this doesn't. Now this is init. There are a bunch of other lifecycle events that a component goes through, and there are certain methods that get called when those lifecycle steps happen. Here's a page on the angular.io website, which lists all the lifecycle events. It's called lifecycle hooks. And you see here, these are the events that are made available to you. These are the methods that Angular is gonna call when certain lifecycle stages are reached. 
The first one here is ng on changes. This is called when Angular sets data bound input properties. Does this sound familiar? This is the at input that we've just seen. When a property is set on a component, there is a change that gets triggered. So ng on changes is the lifecycle hook. When you're using an add input and you're accessing a data bound input property, Angular needs to set those values in your class instance. When the values are set, Angular automatically calls a method called ng on changes on your component. Does our component have an ng on changes method? Well, no. So Angular just says, okay, I have nothing to do here and moves on. But if you want something to execute, when the values are set, when the input values are set, you can use the ng on changes method. In our case, yes, we could have actually used the ng on changes to get the input property. This method is called before ng on init. And after this is the next lifecycle, the ng on init. This is what we've been using. This is called to initialize the directive or component after Angular first displays the data bound properties and sets the input properties, all right? So this is again, a kind of complete initialization of the component. So I by default use ng on init when I wanna make sure that the component is fully initialized. You can choose to use ng on changes for this particular use case, but either of these should be fine. There are a bunch more lifecycle methods here, which I'm not gonna cover right now, but you can look at this documentation and understand what's going on here. There is also an ng on destroy, which is the cleanup. If you wanna run some cleanup code before a component is destroyed, it's removed from the view, it's not accessed anymore. You can do things using the ng on destroy. Again, all these are methods that you can write in your component in order to make use of those lifecycle hooks, right? If your component does not have those methods, like this one, just has ng on in it and none of the other methods, Angular just ignores those lifecycle stages, doesn't call any methods. But if you have those methods, Angular does call it, right? The methods are available to us using interfaces. You see here, the address card component implements an interface called on init. This kind of makes this work well in the TypeScript world where you have implementations of interfaces. So whenever you have a component that implements this interface, you gotta implement the method that that interface provides. In this case, it's ng on init. You can, of course, get rid of this, then it's perfectly fine. This component still works exactly the same way. Angular is not looking at that interface. Angular is just looking at the existence of this method. But if you use that interface, you are kind of letting your development environment be aware of the fact that there is this method. So in this case, let's say I remove this, then I'm gonna get an error. It says, okay, this is a component that implements the interface, but it doesn't have the ng on init method. So it kind of acts as uh, like a compile time check to make sure that you have this method in place. But this is just for development slash compile time checking. Angular doesn't really care about this interface, but it does provide these interfaces for these methods in case you wanna use it. So this is a little bit of an introduction to lifecycle hooks and uh, uh, an example use of ng on init lifecycle hook. We will be using all our initialization code, we'll be writing all our initialization code inside this method rather than in the constructor so that we have this guarantee that Angular has had a chance to completely initialize this component instance and do everything it has to do before our code runs. If that's something that you need, well, this is the way to do it.